Hello everyone and welcome to Elevate Your Career with AI. We're so excited to have you here today for our webinar. Thank you for joining us. In a few minutes, I will be handing it over to our expert, Danny Mirza, for his presentation on AI tools that you can use for more efficient workflows and increased productivity. As we get started, um, so I invite you all to introduce yourselves in the chat by typing your name and where you're joining us from today. My name is Prama, and I'm a Knowledge Mobilization Specialist at Research Impact Canada, housed at York University. It's nice to meet you all. Here's an overview of our agenda for today. Now that we've had our introductions, or as you're introducing yourselves in the chat, Next, I'll go through some housekeeping items that I'd like to bring your attention to. I'll then pass it over to Danny for his presentation on AI tools. And then following that, we'll have some time for a Q&A session. And finally, we have a poll to go through some feedback questions. I'd like to highlight some housekeeping items for today's session. We invite you to chat with us by typing your comments in the chat box in Zoom throughout the session. We also invite you to submit your questions throughout the session using the Q&A feature in Zoom. You can do this by clicking the icon at the bottom of your screen with the two speech bubbles. Closed captioning is available and you can enable this by clicking the CC icon. This webinar will be recorded and shared with you after the presentation, along with the slides and any resources and links that are mentioned. Finally, simultaneous interpretation is French is available for today's session. So if you'd like to participate in French, you can click on the globe icon at the bottom of your screen and select your preferred language. As we're not all gathered in the same space, we recognize that this land acknowledgement might not be for the territory that you're currently on. We ask that if this is the case to acknowledge in the chat box the traditional territory that you're on and the current treaty holders. As for us here at RIC, led by York University, we recognize our presence on the area known as Toronto, which has been taken care of by the Anishinaabeg Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron-Wendat, and the Métis. We also acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. This territory is subject to the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes, Great Lakes region. We're so excited to have Danny Mirza as our speaker today. So Danny is the lead career consultant at Coventry University. And he has extensive experience as a career development professional in the UK higher education sector. So Danny's known for his expertise in careers branding, marketing and engagement through innovative technologies such as generative AI. And I'm now going to hand it over to Danny for his presentation. Welcome. Thank you very much, Prama. I love the way she, you know, introduced me. And, um, and she mentioned the word, the expert would take over. You know, in today's world, the way technology is evolving, nobody is an expert, but yes, an evolving expert, I would say, I would uh, claim to be. Um, so thank you very much for showing up in this session as well. This is kind of a continuation and taking AI tools to the next level from the last session that I did uh, with the same lovely uh, RIC. And um, so if you have, just so you know, I'm still the same person. If you have any questions with regards to chat, GPT, Claude, and all of the other tools that we showed in the last one, please shoot. There'll be a Q&A at the end, and I'll definitely stay for that. And, uh, and then any questions you have from this session today. So let me share my slides. So let's begin Danny episode two, or the season finale, I would say. Lovely. Thank you very much. Done and dusted. Perfect. So, <clears throat> because it is a continuation, but then still, I would definitely expect a lot of people who did not attend the last session. So, I would definitely introduce myself again in a good way, and then as well as give you a background of generative AI as well, because that is the talk of the town. And just today, I've been informed Google has plunged into it with Gemini, and that they are they are being called the Chat GPT killer. So yeah, so much is happening in this space. Um, so we will, let me just go into full screen and ta -ta -ta, present, love to present on Canva. Lovely, so today we will talk about how to elevate your career with automation 
it'll be a live demo of Vardin, Zapier, Teal, and Hyperite AI. You know, I'm throwing a lot of names there. Trust me, these are some really fun and cool and very useful tools. The reason I said fun, because you'll be like, wow, and cool, because if you use them in your organization or with your clients, they'll be like, wow, you are on it. And useful because it will definitely help you streamline your work in some sh shape or form and will help you save time as well. Lovely. Uh, who am I? I am Danny. So that's an AI generated version of me. I am the lead consultant, kind of the head of talent team, the career service in the Comity University London campus, uh, originally an expat from Pakistan and since the last six, seven years have been living in the UK. And you never know, invite me to Canada, would love to be in Canada. Um, that's me and lovely. So that's the agenda for today. We'll talk about generative AI. A lot of you who have attended the last session would know about this, but I would give you a background as well. Then Gen AI and the world of work, why the know-how of AI is so important today. Why you as a practitioner of skills and development or any job or sector that you belong to, because the last session was very targeted to skills and you know career counselors. But if you are joining us and if you're not part of that sector, if you are just an employee in a company and you're like, I need to automate my work, I need to stand out from the rest, you should know the world of work is changing and that generative AI, AI will be a big, big part of it. We'll talk about the Bardeen use case, one of the softwares I use, and Zapier in some way, and Teal and Hyperwrite. And uh, a disclaimer here, all of these tools can be used for free, obviously in a limited way, and a lot of them would have paid subscriptions as well, which you don't need to do. Because if you want to use it in some shape and form, if you want to try it within your workflow, obviously you can try it for free. And there's so many functions that I'll show you because I don't even pay, I just pay for one of them, but the rest of these softwares, I can see all three of them, I don't pay for it. Neither do my clients pay for these things. So they will still use it for free. And there are a lot of functions that you can use for free and would save you a lot of time and make you look very cool in your organizations. You know, it's very important to look cool in your job. Who would agree? I think everyone would agree that you need to be the coolest one in your job. Um, that's how I like to work. So let's go ahead. And so what is generative AI? As I always say, with generative AI, the buzz of the town, we should not know the nitty gritties. And I repeat, we should not know the nitty gritties of the technology behind generative AI, whereas we should know the user centric or user front of generative AI. And that's about it. We use phones smartphones we use them do we know how they're actually made until, until unless we are a software engineer or a or some sort of a computer engineer we use google every day right but it's a search engine that's what i know but do you actually know how it operates in the background there might be some engineers and amazing people from the uh, computer science background who say i know danny please don't talk for me but generally we use a lot of tech but we might not know what goes into it Similarly, with generative AI, let's talk about the user centric definitions and end of things. So I have a few guests here and let's talk about generative intelligence, artificial intelligence. So Bella, can you please tell me what that is? Hi, Danny, and hello to everyone here today. Why not, Danny? I love talking about generative AI. Generative AI is a type of AI system that can create new content, such as text, images, videos, or audio by learning from existing data. Mm -hmm. Even I am an AI generated avatar, and I am not that confident in public speaking, but I tried my best to come and meet you all today. Thank you very much, Bella. So yes, Bella gave you a very basic definition of the buzz of the town, generative artificial intelligence. You give it data and ask it to create something based on that data. That's what generative artificial intelligence is. It's based on something existing, repurposing of all that data, uh, and shapes it as an output. It could be pictures, videos, or videos like this. So Bella itself is a generative uh, AI created uh, avatar. So again, one of these things you could use in your organization, like videos like these to stand out in your presentations. So Elliot, what are large language models for people who are, who should be chat GPT masters by now after my last session? So what is large language model? Hey Danny, hello to everyone. Thanks for inviting me today. 
So I will briefly explain what LLM is. LLMs are large language models that are trained on huge amounts of text and can predict the next word in a sentence based on the context. Mm. Imagine a Google that can talk and chat with you rather than giving you thousands of links. Please. And yes, I used to hate spending hours on going through those links. Don't you too? Yes, yes, who doesn't? So large language models, chat GPTs, Bing's, Claude's, Hugging Chat, Llama Chat, all of these AI supported chats out there, they are large language models. So it's like you could chat to them. Imagine they have the world's knowledge and you can keep on chatting to them and they'll give you a very precise answer as compared to a thousand of links from a Google search. And chat GPT is just one example of it. So Thomas, I want to make you talk today. I know you have a sore throat just like me. So if you need more information about generative AIs, if you want to lead that agenda within your organization and they're like, I'm not happy with a user centric definition. Can you please give me at least 10 to 15 pages on that? So there's a link on the side that you can use, which is a generative AI guide for non technicals and you'll get the slides anyway. So that's the user centric knowledge and definition of generative AI. So this is what we need to know. And now let's talk about the Gen AI timeline. November last year, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to Gen AI. Uh, launched GPT 3.5, OpenAI launched it uh, last November. And then since then they never stopped. Chat GPT Plus came into play. They wanted to earn some money. Bing AI, Microsoft came into play. GPT 4, the best version out there, came in March 23 and May, browsing access. Oh, Gen AI cannot access internet. Now it can. And then MS Copilot, that changes everything. So, and I said in, in the last um, presentation as well that Microsoft is about to embed and has already embedded chat GPT and generative AI in all their applications. So all your all organization need to do is, is to opt in and obviously pay extra for it. And now AI is everywhere. And AI is helping automation to take it to the next level. And that's what we are here, trying to do here, that how generative AI plus with automation could help us save time, which is a precious resource as a practitioner or a person who works in the industry, because time is money, they say. So let's go ahead and talking about the world of work. So why it's very, very important in today's world of work, the AI adoption rate has gone up. Now this is so funny, like us as practitioners of careers and all, we might not already be using AI. We'd be like, who is adopting it? So people, big companies, so medium to large companies are adopting AI in some shape or form. Hence, we need to get ready for the market. It's very, very important. And yes, the AI investment has gone up over the last couple of years. And this year it has been around 50 billion. It has to go up and it has definitely exceeded that with Microsoft helping and coming in. And it's just not taking our jobs, please. It's here to, help you cost save by saving time, tick, 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 right? Time, it saves that time for you. It makes you more efficient in what you do and obviously help you gain more revenues and imagine the kind of money it can help companies earn. So this is the world of work you guys are about to go into or are already working in and are maybe not aware of what's happening around us and how to stay ahead of the curve. Um, there's an increase for what kind of AI talent is required 300,000 AI researchers. So the market wants generative AI know-how in an employee, in your clients, in the way you work. Simple as that. You might say, oh, I don't see this happening in Canada in the next two years. You can, it's fine. And you'll be like, okay, let's not learn it now. But the problem is there are people right now who are learning this. So they'll be ahead of you. There's, there was a good saying on LinkedIn the other day, which is, oh, AI won't replace you. But somebody who knows how to use AI will. There you go. So your fellow peers, somebody in this room or me, I'm kidding. Um, so what are our options? Please don't be an AI utopian. Don't be an AI utopian. AI won't do the whole work for you. It's never going to happen that way. You'll always be involved. Don't be an AI doom and gloomer. Don't be like, I'm never going to work with AI. I'm a human. I'm never going to use automation or AI in any shape or form. Please be, don't be these two be an AI realist. I always start my sessions with this because this is very, very important. Being an AI realist is what we need to do. There are issues with AI, acknowledge them. There are amazing things AI do, use them. This is what an AI realist is. So let's do that after today. Now, these are the four tools I use for some sort of an automation 
in my workflow every day. So this is what the session is all about. So one is called Bardeen. There are links here if you get the slides. When you get the slides, you would click them and it would take you to those platforms. So Bardeen helps you do some automation of the work. Obviously, in the free version, there's limitations, but free version is fine to do the stuff that a lot of you do in terms of finding leads and stuff. Zapier, very, very similar to what Bardeen does. And it has some free actions as well. Plus, you get some a month of pro trial, so you could keep on trialing it. Teal, love it. Love Teal. And Teal is automation job tracker. Love it to the core. And then one of my favorites, such a fancy tool. And you'll be like, wow, this basically makes you stand out in your organization if you are using that. And that is called HyperWrites Personal AI Assistant. I love it. Let's get down to this. So let's talk about Bardeen now. So I'll click Bardeen. I'll show you the platform. So double click. Perfect. Let's go. Let's go. Double click to interact. Yes. Um, can you guys see the slide? Can you see the platform Bardeen? Can anyone give me some sort of nod? Can you see Bardeen? Lovely. Yes. Is that yes to me? Perfect. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys are so engaged in the chat. So this is Bardeen. You can try it for free, obviously. And basically, it's an automation tool for free. You could use it limitedly and I'll show you how. But if you want to pay for it, it's it's the possibilities are endless. If you are a freelance practitioner who works on, on their own, you don't need to pay for it. If you're part of an organization, you can make your business case by using it first and then say, say this is, saves me time. So it's try for free. You click this, um, just like any website, it would make you download and it works with your browser. It's an extension in your browser. You can see this now. So as I said before, this session is very experiential today. The video of this session is much more important than the slides. So you click that, it makes you download a plugin or a browser extension, if you want to call it that, and then you add it to there. And it shows up on the top here. Can you see it? Yes. Over here on the top right of my browser, you see this multicolored logo of Bardeen. This is where it shows up. And now let's use this. So <coughs> you click this, and this is how the interface looks like. Um, the automation that you create on Bardeen, they are called playbooks. And that's something you need to run by clicking. If you want an automation to run on its own after a certain time or after certain some certain things happen, that is called auto books. Most of the auto books would be paid for. So there is a lot of potential in the auto books, but for now it's behind the paywall. Maybe start with the playbooks and then see the value. And if you want to pay for it, you can. Um, Let's talk about the use case. I use Bardeen for one particular thing. I work with a lot of clients who are looking for jobs and they want particular, um, I, I basically send emails. I work with the career service. We send emails to students with a list of jobs they can apply for. And it saves my <clears throat> internship manager a lot of time to very quickly scrape all the links from a website of jobs that my students can apply for and put it into one list together rather than manually copy pasting it there. So I'll give you an example. For example, if I open up LinkedIn here and you click LinkedIn and then you go here. And I love to do, um, you know, these live demos and they can at times fail, but we'll do it. So you go to jobs here and you click jobs. Why can't I click it? Let me do this Ta -da -da. for some odd reason. Okay, okay, it's working so slow. Perfect. So in the job search bar, let's do let's do what? Let's do <coughs> accounting. Uh, let's do accounting uh, management, and then put in the location as Canada, for example. Let's take a city or a state. Let's go for Ontario, maybe. And then this is the search of those roles in here. And if you help, uh, if you want to help yourself with cert certain roles, and if you use all these filters, date posted, experience level, salary, company, all the filters, you could play with all the filters, set them, 
First of all, you set them. And then what you do is you click Bardeen. You click Bardeen. <coughs> Sorry. You click Bardeen and you click Create for now. If you want to create something from zero. And then this interface will show up. Then you do this button, click this button called Scrape. Scrape. This is the most slow I would ever talk because I want you to learn. Scrape. Scrape data on the active tab. Click this. And then it would ask you using Scraper template, write LinkedIn in here. And you scroll down. It says LinkedIn job search results by Bardeen. You click this. How many of you would want, for example, the top 100, top 50, let's go for 10 for now. 10 results, number of list items to extract, no, 10 only for now. And how many pages you wanted to scroll, but I'll keep it to uh, one for now. And then what you do is you click done. That's a very, very simple playbook. You can see this plus buttons on the both side. If you have the pro version, you could do so many amazing things with it. For now, it's the free version. If you just want to scrape this information from there, you click done. You name this automation Ontario jobs and you click save. It would show up in your playbooks and all you need to do is click this. It clicks. And then it's searching for those jobs which are open and give you the whole list and you could just click download downloads as an Excel sheet and uh, you click this it opens up as an Excel document. Let me know if you could see the Excel document when it opens up. Can you guys see the Excel document? Yes. Oh, no, no, yes, we don't see the you. Excel document. Sorry. No. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Thank you for that. So I knew that would be a problem. You know why? That's why I always like to share my whole screen. Now you can see it, right? Yes. Right? Yes. So there you go. LinkedIn jobs with links and it can work with a lot of other websites like Indeed and Read gives you all the information that you need. I use this to scrape internships and stuff for my students. My university pays for the paid version of this somehow and what my internship manager has done he has put in triggers so every week it makes a list of finance internships make a lot of those things on multiple websites and send him an email with those links this is what bardeen can achieve if you pay for it so i'm not saying i'm not selling bardeen they should pay me a commission on this but what i'm saying is i particularly myself i don't do this so if i i don't do much student appointments now but whenever i do it i'm like Student, you need to go and apply for these things. They're like, yeah, I'll use these keywords. I'm like, no, I'll give you the links. So all the time that I've spent sitting down with him, finding him the right opportunities, using the right filters from the websites, all those keywords, I actually extract something, give it to him, him or her when they go away. So I use the free version a lot. So this is how you do this. This is Bardeen. And simple as that. You could make these kind of scrape. You could scrape information from any website which you're visiting, if you pay for the paid one, it can happen in the background. Now that is next level because then you actually physically don't have to have the screen open. They would do it maybe five, uh, 9 a.m. on a Monday. Do it every Monday. It would do that for you. Those are called play auto books. Got it? Auto books are those things. So it will there'll be a whole thing that you could play with. But this is Bardeen. For now, <coughs> if you want to use the free version, use it as a scraping tool. Got it? And then you obviously you can upgrade and then you can uh, today I'm not on my university laptop. <coughs> Hence, uh, I, otherwise I would have access to my the paid version as well. But there you go. Playbooks and auto books. It's your play area. It's very, very user intuitive. You click create and it can ask you what you want to, it to do. You can attach a lot of softwares that you use on the site. For, for example, if you want to manage your calendars, I'll give you an example of one, the way one of my managers use it. So that is um, whenever a new event starts. So for example, I'm about to present this workshop. It is part of my Outlook calendar. It starts a new event and automatically it would create a Google sheet for me, which would say minutes of the meeting. 
and would give me all the headings. For example, if you wanted to it, it to remind you to write the minutes, it can automatically put that Google Sheet on your face. And there you go, the meeting has started. You need to go. The Google Sheet is here. So these kind of automations can happen on this, but behind the paywall. But you could scrape information from different websites for free on Bardeen. This is what I, this is how I use Bardeen right now. Let's talk about tool number two, which is Zap <coughs> Zapier. Lovely. This is Zapier. Very, very similar, very, very similar to Bardeen. A bit fancy. Uh, yes, a bit more difficult to understand later on, but same automation style. It, it creates a workflow. So this happens, then this happens, then this happens. So like a timeline of what you need, what you may want to make it uh, to do for you. Um, I, I at times use it uh, in my organization. Uh, they pay for this and they get the Outlook uh, integration. And it works really greatly with one of these, um, I mean, these calendar invites as well. So for example, if you are having a meeting with a person and you were like, if this, when this meeting ends, send this person another invite for another follow-up meeting two weeks later. So it, these things can happen in here. For example, um, when somebody, um, somebody joins a, uh, a meeting, on zoom with me open up a google sheet and after the meeting send the person a follow-up invite for another meetup <coughs> sorry um so the only benefit of this is you can talk to it it says powered by ai right you can talk to it so you click generate, it would try to create a zap. That's what they call, their automation is called zap it, zap it. So, and you could ask it to make those things for you and it would show up here in the screen and it would take some time to create that. For example, there you go, track Zoom meetings and send follow-up invites. Ta-da! Here's your zap. Track Zoom meetings, send follow-up invites. So new meeting starts, create Google Sheet, and then create a zoom, in, zoom invite after the meeting time is over. These kind of things. And you can try it because right now I have the, uh, the, pay, uh, the professional trial, so I can use it. So try it. If you click this try it button, I will take you to the next day so that you know you're aware of this. This is how the workflow looks like. You know, this workshop that I'm doing today, we're not making you a master of automation. What we're trying to do is, you, you might have never clicked these websites but after this session, you'll be like, okay, let's try this. And then when you come to this website, you'll never go back. You'll be like, I need to experiment that. Can this happen? Can this happen? I talk to a client when the meeting ends. Can I send a feedback form to the client automatically rather than me sending an email? The possibilities are endless. So what my job today was to bring you to these websites because it's only an hour to show you this thing can happen. And then you publish it, you turn, or turn it on and you publish it. You need to uh, get your accounts connected to it to connect your Zoom account, connect your Google Sheets, connect your Outlook or whatever. So there you go. And then you just say publish. Every time a Zoom invite in your calendar starts, it would do that for you every single time. Experiment with the free trial when you get when you after the workshop, whenever, whenever you want to see my you know slides again, try this in your workflow and see maybe the funny part is automation is not here to do everything for you. Even if one automation and one of my client gave me that feedback, even I automate one small part and task of my job and it saves me 10 minutes, for example, 10 minutes, how many times it get multiplied 10 minutes X 20, how many hours I could save in a month that I can spend with my family and friends or in other things, in creative things. How many times do we tell ourselves, I need to do something and I don't, I don't have the time to. Maybe we could simplify the way we work. And pay, yes, and I, I won't shy away by saying, yes, pay a little for it, it's fine. We are, we are in a client-based system and if we could save our time, which is a precious resource, let's do that. And if we are part of organizations, show them this can work and we can make this happen. Lovely. So this is Zapier for you. <coughs> Sorry. And now my favorite tool, which is Teal. This is how Teal looks like. 
the platform this is a job tracker you download this it would give you <coughs> uh, sorry it would give you uh, uh, extension like that on the top and then what happens is for example let's go to LinkedIn so we go to LinkedIn and you are looking at this job here let me just scroll that and da -da -da, it's loading <coughs> loading 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 perfect you go here you click teal teal which is us shows up from the side it can review the whole job for you so any job you want to save it saves them for you in a separate sheets that it uh, helps you uh, manage your job track job tracking and be on track for any application that you might need to make it gives you reminders send you emails that you need to apply for this job uh, for example if you want to um, get information about your own LinkedIn profile it helps you automate that as well so there you go it can tell you how you can improve your profile you can go to another person's profile and it would tell you something else so if you go to another person's profile like my friend chris here and and if you click teal again on the right side there you go it would talk about chris's profile i love this function because if you find a good person to chase up you can see what is the relationship is he a co-person what is the goal and follow-up date it would remind you to send a follow-up or message this person makes a calendar invite for you the so deal is next level that helps you write your resumes and stuff as well. And now one of the last things that I'm going to show you today, and then we go into the Q&A. I know it's very overwhelming, but the session was not to make you experts of this, but to know at least these four tools exist. Now my favorite part, which is, let's go here. You could see this small icon on the right says start personal assistant. I click this on the bottom right. It says, what help? What can I help you with today? Let's do this. So can you please open Gmail and send an email to Daniel Mirza at yahoo.com and just say hi in the email subject. Email subject. Um, just bear with me. Email subject and send the email. Enter. Now look at the magic. <coughs> it would run the whole automation for me the way I've asked it to do. So you could task in progress. It would open up Gmail. This makes you very, very cool in your organization and navigate to Gmail. I'm not using my hands at all. <coughs> it's doing the whole task for me. So I'll show you the full screen. I'm not doing anything. It's running the automation. It opened up my Gmail automatically. And now it's trying to make, write an email. And all of this can happen. There you go. I'm not touching it. So this is one, just one use of it. You could use it to extract jobs for you. Just click this and go make a coffee and say, can you please do this for me? And you go and make the coffee, you come back, the task is done. Uh, send invites to all my team members for a meeting on 4th of July. I mean, 4th of July is the Independence Day for USA, 4th of uh, June. And uh, just say uh, the topic should be this. You go away, do something, it would do that for you. It can do this on the background as well. You can close this tab, it can still do that for you. There you go. Send button, send to the email. There you go. Completed the whole task for me. Send, send the email. The email would come on my phone, which is my uh, Yahoo account logged in here. But this is the future. There you go. Task complete. Imagine how many hours and give it a very complex task. For example, can you please go online and search this topic? Make a Google Sheet. Summarize the uh, uh, articles you see on Google search. Put that here and make a summary of it. Make it look nice on Google Docs or something like that. Make a presentation out of it. And you're away having fun and of somewhere. And you should be working from home. But yes, you are working because AI automation is working for you. This is the future. 
of AI and where we are heading and all the things AI can do for you is in your hand right now. So go and experiment with these things. And basically this is the future. All I wanted to show you today was to present myself for Q&A as well as to show you the next level of automation that you can do. And it's not very, very expensive. Talking about hyper AI, right? The last thing that I showed is only $15, $15 a month, but it saves me a lot of time. Sadia here has been saving a minute per task, but that is a lot combined together. It frees her an hour a day. She can spend with time. The best part is that it's not that difficult to start automations. Small learning curve, but you will never look back. The future of the world is these tools that you see on my platform right now. All you need to do is obviously somebody like me who can show you this is possible. This is not rocket science. This is easy. Just try and experiment. Go look at my video again and you'll be like, let's do this. If Danny is doing this, I'm not an expert. I'm evolving every single day and you can too. And you can use all the tools in the slides. If you want to use some chat GPT with emotional intelligence, this, per this is Pi on the right side. It has EQ. Microsoft Copilot. And there's a message from a future version of Danny. Hello. I hope so you guys can hear me fine. I am Danny from the future. This workshop today is the start. This workshop today will change everything and would be the start of the new age of careers and employability. You know where I am today? I am at the International Space Station talking about careers in space with my students. So things are about to change for the best. Get ready and you are in great hands. Thank you. So thank you very much for the session and thank you, Danny from 2040. Over to you, Prama. Right on time today. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Jenny, for taking us through all these different tools and then showing us how you can use it for um, skills and workforce development. So we do have some questions that are coming through. So, Danny, yeah. if you are able to click on the Q&A uh, window okay. in Zoom. <coughs> yes. OK. Uh, how is it different from currently? Uh, obviously, managing calendars is one function of these tools, not the whole thing. So if you just want to use currently and there are currently in integrations within Bardeen and Zap as well. So you could get all your different softwares in one workflow. That's what automation is. Um, Danny, you're familiar with this than that. How do programs you've showed compares to? I'm not aware of that, but I'll definitely get back to all of you when I'm aware of this, but definitely not. I've heard it for the first time. IFTTT. Love that. I love my acronyms, but this is next level. Joseph, what courses or trainings uh, can you recommend to help us? Oh, more questions are coming. Uh, what courses or training can you help us recommend expert to become an expert in AI? First of all, Joseph, we don't need to be an expert in AI. We need to be an expert in our field and use AI. Got it? And basically, I would definitely go for Digital Garage. Google Digital Garage has a lot of courses. OpenAI offers a lot of courses. And because if you learn it from OpenAI and have the shiny certificate from them, it means that you are learning from the best. Love these tools as a simplify way, a simplification way to expect a workload. Is there any data to retain in this efficiency apps? So answer is yes and no at the same time, Donna, which is when you link your applications, all these, your calendars and all these things, you are somehow agreeing for the platform to look at these things, but nothing is retained. They look at it, they manage the workflow and these apps for you, but they don't retain anything. If that was the answer question. Uh, can you schedule multiple emails to different contacts in the admin system? Yes, you can. Sky is the limit, Elizabeth. You keep on using this and you'll find, okay, this is how it works. It's, it's, it's in its infancy stage. It might say, oh, error, but you change the way you ask it, it would work. So you could send, open up five contacts and send five different things to these people. So five different emails with different content to five different people can, can happen. It might give you an error at first, but you'd be like, okay, maybe I'm writing it a bit too long. But you'll find the right way out, Elizabeth. Um, should we be concerned about the security and personal information? Um, I've already answered this. It looks at it, doesn't retain it. But then again, obviously, your organizations uh, would have all these standards adhered to. So when my organizations agreed to this, my IT team looked at it. So they said it's fine. It doesn't retain anything. 
and a human doesn't look at the data. So no, no employee of that company, Bardeen or anything could look at those things. It's just the generative AI uh, background just looks over it and just makes the decision there and then, doesn't retain anything. We are a Microsoft shop. Can you elaborate on Copilot? There's a video in there, Dave. So Microsoft shop, lovely, what's that? Lovely, like do you sell products? Lovely, send me one. Um, so can you elaborate Copilot? Copilot is basically MS365. People buy licenses of MS365 applications. These are MS Office Suite, all those things. There'll be a chat GPT assistance in all of these applications. So whether it's Word, it's PowerPoint, it's Excel, there'll be chat GPT embedded within each of MS365 applications. Can you use any platforms for all these, such as Firefox? Any platform for all these, such as uh, So they can be plugged in into any um, uh, browser if that was the question. The other way around, Becky. So yes, you can embed this, not just in Google Chrome, but in Firefox, Explorer, wherever. Are there any security considerations? Uh, again, the same question I've answered. Thank you for the question, Jennifer. Uh, Carleen, in Canada with government contracts, we are required to keep clients' information data within the country. Do you know if any of these tools are in compliance with the government? Do not know the exact answer to this one, but get in touch with your IT team and anything. If you basically work, if you work solo, I'll get in touch with me. I'll try to find the right information for you. But we, as in the UK, we are governed by GDPR and we at times at times have issue. For example, if the company is owned by America, it's in the States. So the, where is the data stored? But the answer to this is at times you'll be surprised to know that the data in the cloud is stored nearer to the place you live. There are structures in place where the information doesn't leave the country. And, you know, organizations, these bodies and all these organizations are very clever with this because we had issue around these things in the UK, but then the organization we were working with, they made sure they were, they were a US company, but whatever they store stays here. I'll give you an example, Handshake. Uh, we use that application for career management, a US company, but they store UK's data in the UK. Uh, when will BART be available in Canada? Hopefully soon. Uh, I think today is a big day for BART because BART got the G Gemini integration as well. So hopefully soon they said, by the start of next year, it'll be everywhere. Uh, uh, what can you share? What tool you used to give the future version of me? Uh, that was DID Studio. So DID Studio. You could use Synthesia to make that as well. Uh, thank you for that question, Sherry. <coughs> Emily, what advice would you give to start optimization? Never know. I never did that way to start. Just go to the website, Emily and maybe play my video on the side and be like, okay, click this, click that. At first you'll be like, okay, this is nice. Slowly but surely it'll grow on you. So, and then you'll see the value of it. The biggest value you'll see when your clients will be like, oh wow, in, in two minutes, how did you do that? That praise is what makes me go, go, go and do these things. So I think the praise and try to use it small, start small, start somewhere, and then you'll get the hang of it. Uh, start with, I would definitely say start with Bardeen. It's a much easier interface to use. And then uh, Bardeen and Teal, these two, Emily. Uh, does data scraping with AI allowed on all websites? Yes, all of the public websites, public domain websites can do that. Um, can Teal track different resumes for a client? Yes, they can. So Teal allows you to have multiple resumes. And Teal is so nice. I could do a whole session in Teal, which is Teal helps you tailor the job using AI for the job you're looking at there and then put in the right keywords, help you do keyword analysis, a very next level tool. It's a, it's a US company. So very, very announced in the UK, but I think, and they answered the same thing issues that I had. Will my students CV go to America? They said, no. Thank you. Then you have a question about privacy <coughs> confidentiality. I think it's the same question I've answered many times, but thank you for the question. Uh, Karthik, can you track different resumes? Yes, they can. Uh, what tool create avatars was for those awesome videos, DID Studio or Synthesia? The teal web page I found only seems to offer resume generating job searching is different to one. No. So if you, the problem is the way they sell themselves is a resume writer, teal, Chantal. So they sell themselves like that. But when you click it, there is a whole new world when you get the browser extension. Because they, first of all, yes, they started with resume writing, AI resume writing, but now they offer a lot of things. Why Anthropic is not available? Sad. I have the same question. Anthropic, why? If you're watching this session, Please come to Canada soon. Um, and then is there a program that creates presentation using avatar instead of recording a live person? Synthesia. Synthesia or Hey Jen. Hey Jen. 
H E Y J G E N H E N H E N and Synthesia can actually you could make your own avatar, your face, your avatar, your moving avatar in H E G E N and obviously behind a paywall. Remember this: if you want to use it to the next level in a commercial way, you need to pay for these technologies. So H E G E N can help you make your avatar, and you can do, that avatar will do the whole presentation. You never have to face the camera ever again. But Grace, come on, we should face the camera. I love camera. Lovely. Can you imagine I did it? Oh, got another question, Donna. Do you recommend adding the apps in your browser? Uh, what was that? Into your browser, tab for easy access. What is the best way to navigate? Yes, to so add, pin, pin, pin those extensions to your browser's tab, uh, so that you can quickly click them and you can remember to use them as well. I always do that, Donna. Will this session be shared? Yes, Mario, why not? I love to be recorded. It is recorded. Uh, Jeanette, why, which AI would you recommend for project management? Such a nice question. So for project management, it depends on what you want to do with project management, how extensive it is. <coughs> if you want to actually pay for something, Zap. Yeah, Zapier is geared for project management. Uh, it is a, a tool which a lot of project management companies use for managing projects. And there's a lot of you could do those um, binary relations in there for in terms of uh, this happens. Okay, this is the trigger. Do this. If this doesn't happen, do that. You could do a lot of project management magic in Zapier, but a bit more difficult to learn, Janet. So yes, beware. Grace, is there a program that you can distate a story to and go back and forth? It will change the order. A story. Yeah, uh, is it for automation? If not, I think this is not an automation question. But yes, I think chat GPT and any large language model nowadays can do that. So you could, uh, you know, make it learn a story and then you can't change the order with it. You can experiment with it. So large language models, please look at my other. I think uh, somehow uh, RIC would be able to provide you with my last presentation, which is on these large language models. Would love to see future sessions on Microsoft Copilot and overall more sessions on different AI tools. It's amazing. Thank you very much, Anastasia. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it today. Definitely connect with me over LinkedIn so that you could see all the LinkedIn amazing AI amazing stuff that I'm doing all over the world. And maybe you'll maybe see some new tools that I'm sharing. Uh, I mean, if you want to write a book, I'm all over the place as I remember things. For book writing, there's a tool called Jenny.ai, Grace. So Jenny as in J-E-N-I-E dot -E AI. Try that. Uh, and copy.ai. These two tools, if you are facing a writer's blog, if you have ideas that you want to, it's, 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 it's in a jumble up form, you want to uh, write all the ideas, but then make a story out of it, those two tools can definitely help you do that. <laughs> Lovely. So thank you very much. If you have more questions, Jenny, yes, exactly. Grace, that's the spelling. Dot AI. Lovely. That was like uh, it was a rapid fire round of a reality TV show. Thank you very much, Prama. And if more questions comes in, send them to Prama, and she always sends those questions to me, and I would have a written answer to this. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, over to you, Prama. Excellent. Thank you so much, Danny, for going through those questions. Um, yeah, I see there's a lot of interest. We did have one more question, a couple more questions in the chat. Uh, Danny, if you could address them. So um, one question we have from Heather is: Is there a mic option for Teal? And do you need the personal assistant, or can you actually just speak through Teal? Okay, so Teal doesn't allow uh, audio function, so you actually have to write it, write it down. Um, and with regards to the AI assistant, you actually need to write as well for now. Um, but but yes, if you want to use AI with your voice, so Bing AI and uh, Chat GPT allows audio functions now. So if you don't want to type and still use generative AI in some shape or form, using the text-based generative AI, those large language models, you could talk to it. Bing AI, all of them nearly offer audio functions now. But for now, Teal and automation, you need to type. Great. And are there apps for the websites that you've discussed today, or are they all just online uh, web-based? Oh, so they're web-based. They're browser-based, basically. That's, uh, browser -based. that's the word. Browser-based things, softwares, whatever, platforms. Yep. Uh, would There's a question in the Q&A as well. Which would, would you use to create content like assignments for an online course? Uh, Jeanette, that would be chat GPT by a long margin. Chat GPT, if you want to make assignments and coursework and you want to make you know some sort of handbooks, whatever, briefs of these 
uh, assessments and all anything chat gpt is the next level and but yeah thank you very much love the comments you send me the copy of the comments <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> but i love that love that yeah perfect what do you get great yeah, thank you so much, Danny. Um, so as we come, uh, as we're nearing the end, um, so we really appreciate, you know, all the tools that you've shared today. If you have enjoyed our presentation today, I encourage you to sign up to our newsletter, our Conversations to uh, Connections newsletter, which is our Community of Practice newsletter. And with our monthly newsletter, you can stay up to date on our future events, opportunities, news, and resources. My colleague, Megan, will post a link to the mailing list in the chat, or you can sign up using the QR code um, that's on your screen. So in just a second, we are going to launch a poll that will appear on your screen. We're striving to, continue, to continually improve our offerings, so your feedback is valuable to us. Please take some time to complete the questions in our poll, and I will give you a few minutes to do that right now. So we'll keep the poll open. And if you're still responding um, to our poll, that's great. We really appreciate it. Um, in addition to our newsletter, I did want to let you know that there are a couple of other, other ways that you can connect with us and stay in touch um, through our website, our email, our LinkedIn, and our Twitter. Um, please note that we will be sending a rec recording of this webinar and a copy of the slides and resources from today's um, session through email. So look out for it in your inbox within the next week or so. And as we're nearing the end of the event, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today for your participation. Um, thank you so much to Danny for your wonderful presentation and coming along and showing us all these different techniques. Um, and to everyone else, I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day or, or evening, and we look forward to seeing you again. <laughs>